Hi, my name is Eve Pierpont and I'm the editor for Mixed Downs Music Feature Section. And I am here today with Milky Way and Sam Matlock from Wargasm. Hi, Sam. Hi, Milky. So do you think Hello. that rock and roll has lost its original essence? And do you think that it will ever find its way back? What do you think would have to happen for the genre to be given life again? I think the genre is a little bit dead. You know, I don't think anything fits in a kind of genre box nowadays anyway. So I think to say that rock and roll is dead is... It's a lot less racist and misogynistic and no one's like having parties with little girls in hotel rooms anymore. So I'd say that's an advantage mm. of new rock and roll. New rock and roll, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's different, it's changed. Thank fuck a lot of the old shit's dead. Um, you know, this is nothing to do with loving the royals and what's going on in our country at the moment. Fuck the royals, fuck the monarchy. But the first thing you say when the king is dead is long live the king. You bring in the new wave, you bring in the new era and you don't need the time for the moment or the movement to die down. And uh, that's what that's what we're doing. That's what's what's always happened, you know. I, I doubt fucking like uh, Chuck Berry knew anything about half the bands I grew up listening to. And I doubt half the bands I grew up listening to know anything about us. It's kind of the way it always is. Cycle moves, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And Fluxar seems to send a loud message to the super wealthy who believe they are gods. <clears throat> Do you think the monetary mentality that people have after becoming famous has negatively, negatively affected the music industry and what genres uh, artists decide to go into? What, you mean MGK deciding to do a pop punk album because he thinks he can profit off of it? I mean, I mean, it's working. He's profiting off of it. People are buying it. I don't know if you can blame him for that. You can blame like, the people that are buying it, you know? I feel like someone like Kanye has clearly got his own shit going on. Like, even after fame, I think with access to bigger resources, I think he'd done better work, you know, one up after he made it, to yeah. be honest. I think it depends on the person and what they what they do with the money. You know, it's it's, it's not a blanket. You can't say the same for everyone. Yeah, so many artists. Like, I mean, My Chemical Romance, Danger Days, and Black Parade look better and sound better because they had the budget to play with, I guess. And if they had more budget, they could have released conventional weapons, but they couldn't because they didn't have enough budget. So well, maybe we probably, should give the right people more money. They probably wouldn't because it wasn't an album. It was great. It could have been. Was B sides. It was going to be an album. I talked about it on stage the other night. I've been watching, but yeah. Gotcha. Um, so where did Lola's voicemail come from? Is it an actual voicemail? Yeah, from Lola. <laughs> yeah, from Lola. Uh, Lola, 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 Lola. Lola's uh, one of our um, one of our co-producers, co-writers, collaborators, whatever you want to call them. Some of the people that we like uh, to work with. There's a very a very sweet daughter called Lola. She's the biggest orgasm fan in the world. Yes. Yeah, so, so, orgasm. Yeah. Which I don't know what that don't know what that says about her or I don't know what teenagers gonna her teenage <laughs> years are gonna be like for him as a father. <laughs> but I think it's a hint maybe he's gonna have to deal with some stuff. We just thought it was quite sweet, quite funny, you know, uh skits and things like that, I guess more of a hip hop world kind of vibe. But that's something we draw a lot of inspiration from, so we thought it'd be a nice little like, you know, Easter egg in a few years or something. Awesome. Yeah, no, I thought that was kind of cool how you put that in there. Um, so just curious how the decision to name a song after Selma Haya came along. Uh, well, I just uh, rewatched From Dusk Till Dawn, so that definitely helped. And also, you know, we wanted to look at, you know, the idea of Selma Hayek and the idea of James Dean and, you know, well, no, well, it's, no, it's less it. about actually, I mean, it's not about those people at all. It's, at the it's, end, it kind of circles right to something. So, Selma Hayek is, is a metaphor. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Selma Hayek is, a, is, a, is just a metaphor. It was just to pick an actress's name and, you know, they're, they're a rich, good looking person. That becomes the metaphor. You, you could pick any actress's name. Avon Lucky said she just watched From Dust Till Dawn. So that was, that was kind of where, where that one. Well, I mean, Sam's done also some awesome stuff, so it's kind of fun using Sam as an analogy that you also think is a total fucking badass. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, so where do you want to take the band in the future if you have any future plans? Big stages, bigger stages, the biggest stages. Yeah, we've done some like um, quite big stages in the States within Biscuit and then some quite big stages at like, festivals in Europe. So one one festival in a Czechia let us like headline a stage. 
which was cool. You got these guys going like, you know, where's your lights? Like, where's your backdrop? Where's your all your stuff? And you're like, we don't actually we don't have any of those things. We don't have any of that yet. We have a so, backdrop. It's like this size in comparison to all the stages. I'd like to. It would be nice to go somewhere that allows us maybe us with a bit of budget, and then we can put on the show that we want to put on, or see how it grows, or you know maybe work with some more mental people. I mean, if we get the budget, then I guess we can cycle back to that first question in a few, the second question in a few years and see if, you know, does the money fuck up the art? Interesting, yeah. Um, yeah. Then, oh, kind of, oh, sorry. What were you saying? It kind of cut out. I uh, said, so you can look us in the eye and tell us, yes. You fucked you up. Fucked it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I have a feeling you guys won't. <laughs> um, so then kind of going off of that, how did it feel when you saw yourselves on multiple new bands to watch lists? I like it. I like it. But I don't like it when they put us on the new metal ones because then people are like, they're not new metal. And I'm like, I agree with you. And I think that there's better bands that people could put on this list. But don't come at us for that. No, we've got but I most of, we just dropped a fucking new metal song. What are you chatting? We're not a new metal band though. Having a new metal song. No, is none of the new, new metal. metal bands these days are new metal bands because it's new metal. It was new for metal at the time. Mm. Now it's not fucking new. Do you sound like a band from the noise? You're not new metal, you're just like noise metal. Just metal. It's nice to be yeah. honest. It doesn't feel like a new band to us, I don't think. You know, because obviously we've been doing it for four years now. Right. So it's always, you always feel a bit strange for someone's like, check out this great new thing. And you're like, I've, I've been living and breathing this every day for, for four years, you know. When you get to like, you know, 1400 plus days working on something, it starts to feel a bit like it's either always been there or it's old. For, for me, it feels like it's always been there, which is nice. I think maybe when it feels like it's old, that's when you've got to work. Yeah, I could totally see that. Um, so uh, how has been, or sorry, geez, who has been each of your favorite artists or groups you've gigged with? Uh, who would you like to work with in the future? I mean, Limp Bizkit is just the best band in the world to tour with and to see play every night. Yeah, that was cool. It's pretty good. We got to hang out, um, last <laughs> summer in LA, we got to hang out with uh, a guy called Jason Butler from a band called Fever. And that was pretty cool. I really like his, I really like the way he speaks. Mm. I really like his lyrics. Um, love his performance, love his vocal style. I'd like to take a look from it myself. So that was, that was pretty fun. <laughs> Hopefully it all cycles back and we'll get to work on some in the future. We play some shows sometimes in the UK with this band called Band. Could you call them a band? Group. They're called Talkie Horror and they're fucking mental. Like <laughs> they, they kind of feel like a really bad acid trip, but with extra drum and bass bits and guitars up now apparently. Yeah they're cool. They're pretty cool. It's kind of like I like playing shows like with them. Their format live is kind of like Prodigy, if that makes sense, you know, so like vocal. A lot of it's like DJ stuff, but then it's also got... Like They've decided to add instruments tonight, which makes it even more chaotic. I like it. Loads of people we'd like to work with. I'd love to do something with, you know, our, our first record's done now. When it comes to the second one, I'd like to work, you know, Trent and Atticus, Trent Reson and Atticus Ross and all that lot. It'd be nice to see what they're up to, well, like MIA or like, Rapper or something. Nice. Mm. The list is pretty extensive. There's a lot of people. Um, it's called Pop at Reading. She's really cool. It's kind of grungy now as well. So I'm going to glasses on. Are you sure? Can you hear us okay? Uh, no, I was just about to say that last part uh, cut out. It was like very uh, robotic, <laughs> if you want to say that again. <laughs> Sorry. Where did we get to? Where, where did we cut out? Um, it was after, oh gosh, now I don't remember. <laughs> Might not have been that important if it wasn't worth remembering, you know. <laughs> No, 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 no. I was just trying. I didn't want to like interrupt in case it would come back. And so I was, I was focusing on that. Uh, I was when Sam, you started to talk again. Poppy. Oh yeah. But yeah. 
Uh, we, we worked with uh, Jason Butler. Yeah, I was a, there. Like that. That was nice. Uh, he's really cool. I like how he talks. <laughs> Uh, I, I definitely base a lot of what I do off what he, what he does in terms of like vocals and the way I arrange my instruments and stuff. We also saw Poppy at Reading. She, Pop. she was pretty sick. She gave me very much Jonathan Davis energy. Mm. And I don't think it was just because she was wearing a kilt. Bottom half, Jonathan. Give me the way she moves. Top She's half, like... the uh, pink haired girl from Lazy Town. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, she does have the same face. Lazy Davis. Jonathan Town, J Town. <laughs> my story called Poppy. Don't worry, we don't need the extra man. <laughs> It'd just be nice to hang out with people. That, it's always nice as a musician to hang out with people that you think are cool. Like going for a beer with them is great, but sitting in a room and hitting some keyboards and playing some guitars is much Definitely. Uh, so I've read that a few years ago, you guys decided to incorporate synthesizers to your music. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about how that came uh, to be? And do you feel like you have the pocket that you're aiming for? Or do you want to evolve your sound further? I think, so we've always done that a little bit just because like movie soundtracks and sound design are cool and fun. I think it's like when they, when they put the UK into lockdown, as shit as it was, it kind of, you know, we're, we're, we're a product of a moment. And, uh, you know, not having access to a drummer not having access to like proper instruments and stuff like that, just having like a guitar and interface and then like a little keyboard. That kind of meant the sound expanded. It's when we got tracks like uh, like Spear and then Backyard Bastards with the program drums and shit like that. And uh, editing became more of a thing. The laptop became like a real instrument for a lot of people, I think, like throughout the pandemic. <clears throat> I don't think we'll ever be satisfied with where it's going because if we do get satisfied with where it's going, what's the fucking point? So the fun thing is pushing it and enjoying it and seeing how it goes. You know, I write for some other people as well, and it's quite fun when you're like, oh shit, I'm now probably one of London's better people at breakbeats and shit now, you know, just because you spend so long doing it, which is kind of cool. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, so Milky, I read on Korea, in a Korean interview that girls would come up to you after shows in the States and say that, They'd never seen a woman play guitar on stage before. I do believe you're definitely an inspiration in the scene of female musicians right now. How do you plan to take this new platform to change that idea? Or do you think we can change that idea? Yeah, it was it, it was really bizarre to me that it was it was when I was actually working as a session musician, people would come up to me and say that to me. So I'm really excited to take our band what we're doing now to the states and kind of show them a, an even an even more wild you know way of being on stage and like being able to be a woman on stage i think i think there's 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 definitely room for change and i think we're definitely capable of change 100 i mean the scene in the uk with women is just absolutely thriving now and across the, pro the border as well like we can absolutely change and there's the people there for it. We just need the support behind it. There's other stuff you do as well, mate. Like, you know, merchandise, not always just being the same old unisex shit for blokes. Yeah, we've, know, whites, we've, uh, we've made, made titty tops, whatever you call them. Baby tees, our yeah. little baby tees. Yeah. <laughs> stuff like incorporating, incorporating people on every side of the, in every side of the project is important, you know, behind the scenes and on stage. Well, yeah, we're pretty pretty militant about balancing out our team, to be honest, as well. Like the idea of having the same same fucking blokes in a van seemed pretty scary to me. I've done it before, and it's like, Ugh, not again. Um, you know, we we always try and make sure there's like a semi representative gender balance in the in the van. It just makes for a nicer dynamic, I think, when a team is balanced. Yeah, definitely. You know, you don't go and play like a video game where like every fucking player person in the team is like playing the role of a tank do you <laughs> everyone has everyone has different different skills and different walks of life and coming from different backgrounds different bodies different upbringings allows you a different a different unique set of abilities that you can bring bring to a team yeah awesome i love that uh so then how do you guys approach writing your songs um it usually starts with a riff that you sung into your voice notes it's normally like, on the street. Normally I have like a, just like thoughts creeping or maybe something triggers them, but subconscious things, you don't really know what, but something triggers something. 
you know, you get a lot, a lot of lyric or a sentence bounces oh, like around, a around in your head. And then eventually it starts just to snap to a tempo in your head and then like a riff or like a note or a chord that like, builds up behind it. And then when you come to put it, start to like flesh it out together and just bounce back and forth. Sometimes it's one that I'll take the reins on. Sometimes it's one that I'll throw this like little spark out there, then Milky will take the reins on it, you know, which is cool because it's, it's, it's two people. It's like the duality of two different sides of life. Is the war and the gasm. So I guess you've got to have, you know, if it's five tracks, you've got to have like, you do two, I do two, and we do one together. There always has to be that kind of bounce. Otherwise, it's going to lose what the project's about. You know, it's not one person, one person's bit sung by two people. It's two distinct personalities fighting each other, fighting each other, <laughs> talking over each other, but also complimenting each other. Awesome. That's so great. Okay. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview. It has been a real pleasure. Nice.